Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, an introduction to CNC. So I've been making knives pretty seriously for almost 20 years now and professionally for a decade or so, but I've only recently bought a CNC machine. Now this right here is a Tormach 770 CNC milling machine. So what I'm going to do today is give kind of a basic introduction to CNC and talk through why a knife maker might or might not want to get a CNC mill. Now, by the way, if you're not a knife maker, I'm going to be talking about very, very basic introductory stuff. So you still might get something out of it, even if you're not coming at this from the direction of a knife maker. All right. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. Numerical controls, that was the kind of thing they said back in the punch card days and the names still kind of stuck around. Now sometimes you'll hear CNC in the context of CAD CAM or computer aided design, computer aided manufacture. But basically what we're talking about is using a computer to control a machine like this that cuts metal. So CNC can refer to lathes, mills, routers, all kinds of different things. Uh, but the most versatile type of uh, CNC machine is this right here, which is a mill. Now, a mill uses a little cutter, just like this right here, called an end mill. Now, the end mill looks kind of like a drill, but it can cut up, down, sideways, a uh, much more versatile little device. So, uh, this CNC machine is controlled by a computer right here, uh, instead of using a bunch of little hand wheels like you would use on a conventional old-fashioned mill. You program it, and the cutter moves around and shapes a chunk of metal. So, to use more technical terms, you can face, meaning flatten something out, you can pocket, which is kind of digging holes in things. Um, you can chamfer, meaning you're sort of knocking the corners off things. Uh, you can fill it, meaning you can round off corners. Um, and of course, you can drill. And uh, if you came to this video not knowing what drilling is, then um, go back to the cat videos. You're probably in the wrong place. Uh, but basically, you're kind of making a little sculpture with this super fast spinning little cutter. So to expand the circle a little bit, you're using CAD CAM software that I mentioned a minute ago, and that tells the mill what to do. So you're designing a part, it could be a knife, it could be all kinds of things, and then uh, taking that computer file over here to the mill, and you're um, producing that part right here. So why did I personally make the decision to throw a big pile of money at something like this? Well, there are basically two directions you can go as a knife maker. You can do kind of one-off, handmade, uh, custom projects where every single blade is different. Or you can use standard designs and kind of repeat them or do variations of them multiple times. Um, now, I took the handmade, super custom, high-touch kind of approach for close to 20 years. And sometimes I did projects that took as long as, you know, two or three months and there's just an insane amount of handwork and very fussy, finicky detail. And for that kind of work, this is not very much use. But if you want to go the other route, if you have designs that you make repeatedly, you might want to take some of the more dull, routine, crappy kind of jobs that you repeat over and over, and you want to just fob them off on a machine. And in that case, CNC is incredibly useful. And that's what I'm doing with my Tactics Armory line of knives. So recently I've started producing a semi-production type of knife and what I want to do is to be able to take certain tasks and push them off onto something besides my own fingertips. Um, you know, does that mean that I push a button and out pops a knife? Absolutely not. It just means that, you know, I take some of these low skill, dumbass kind of operations out of the equation. You know, I like to think I'm a fairly smart guy. I like to think I'm a fairly high skill guy. So why should I spend 60, 70% of my time on these dumb, low skill, repetitive kind of things? 
to me. It makes no sense. Let's automate them. That's where this comes in. So you may ask, you know, who's a machine like this intended for? Do I have the technical chops or disposition to figure this thing out? Look, I'm going to be honest. CNC is not a cakewalk. It's the kind of thing that works best for sort of nerdy, obsessive type people. Uh, if that describes you, CNC really might be your kind of thing. But if you have a short attention span, if you have no patience for analytical work, if you don't like figuring out puzzles, if you flunked every math course you ever took, uh, you know, if you're a really kinetic, hands-on kind of person who can't sit still for five minutes, CNC may not be for you. So don't get me wrong. I mean, none of this takes a transcendent genius. Any reasonably bright person can figure it out, but it'll take concentration, it'll take energy, and most of all, it'll take a fair amount of time to get over the hump of figuring out how to use it. So, look, do you need to spend 10 years, you know, in a machine shop? Do you have to, uh, you know, have uh, some kind of certification from community college? Do you need a PhD in engineering? No, you don't. But, realistically, all those things are going to help. Me, I was a history major in college. Uh, you know, I can add up a short column of fairly simple uh, figures and come up with surprisingly different answers. So, um, you know, regular mortals can do this stuff. Believe me, if I can, you know, so can a lot of you guys. So what kind of learning curve are we talking about here? Well, this kind of gets back to what your character is again. I, you know, I was talking about this earlier. It really depends on how much time you have, where you start, and you know, just how you kind of dig into things. Um, in, in my case, I was producing my first honest to God knife in maybe a couple of weeks. From a CAD CAN standpoint, a knife is really a pretty simple little widget, but to get a whole suite of knives sort of into production, uh, you know, it's something I'm still working on after several months at this. There's a lot of ground up kind of stuff that you have to do in order to produce a part in terms of fixturing and so on. And that's all very time consuming in addition just to teaching yourself how to do this stuff. Now, it helps in a huge way to have a machining background. I'm not a machinist, but I own a lathe, a mill, drill presses, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I came to this with a, at least a basic understanding of the general issues that you're going to face, the tools that you have to have when you're trying to cut metal. So uh, I didn't just walk out with my history degree and start cutting chips. But like I say, if you're the obsessive kind of guy who really likes to dig into something and go nuts on it, this is something you'll be able to figure out. Um, here's something to keep in mind, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in my next video uh, that, where I'm going to dig more into the nuts and bolts of, of CNC. Uh, there's several layers to making CNC work. So in order to, to make a CNC mill actually be able to produce a part, first you have to understand how to operate the mill. Uh, you know, what's an end mill? What are XYZ coordinates? Uh, you have to have some understanding about fixture, fixturing and, and clamping and measurement and all these kind of classic machinist type things. Uh, but past that, you have to understand the software that runs the mill. So you've got CAD software, you got CAM software, and you've got the controller, which is this right here. And depending on how you configure it, that might be a couple packages, it might be three packages, but each module or package or whatever is a separate thing. It's its own little thing. And, uh, you know, you got to be able to get all of that stuff to work in concert or the whole thing falls apart. So it's kind of like a chain. And if any one piece of that chain is not intact, You'll be crashing tools and busting end mills and all this terrifying noise. So the point is, in my particular case, in order to establish that, you know, kind of entire chain of um, pieces that we have to have to make this thing work, I kind of went into full court press mode when I got my Tormach. I put in a lot of hours. Uh, but, you know, now after a couple months, it's, it's pretty much doing what I want it to. So what's it cost to get into CNC? Well, it really depends on what, you, what you're trying to make and what you're trying to do. Um, you know, is this a side job? Is it a hobby? Is it something you want to do with your kids? Is it a retirement you know, project, some tinkering that you want to do? Uh, is it a professional kind of uh, commitment you're making? It all depends, right? So, uh, you know, you can start with sort of on, on one end, homebrew CNC type setups. 
um, and they don't cost tons of money. And those can be done on all kinds of platforms from little tiny desktop mini mills, you know, bench top mini mills to much bigger platforms. Um, you know, if you're a professional machinist or just a really geeky guy, a retired engineer, whatever, you might want to make a CNC machine from scratch. I am not that guy. Um, also, if you're planning on milling steel, you need a fair amount of torque. This is really important, obviously, to knife makers. A lot of machinists work mostly with uh, aluminum, um, but you know, for me, I'm using a lot of tool steel, so you got to have enough grunt to do that. And a little, you know, uh, bench top type machine may not quite get you there. Now, look, on the high end, you could buy a Mori or a Haas or you know some kind of big industrial machine, and these are you know hundred thousand plus kind of, uh, of machines. You know, me, I spent about 15 grand on this machine right here, uh, and, you know, including some tooling and, and uh, so on. Um, you know, like most things in life, you look at the basic package, it's 6800 bucks or whatever, um, and that doesn't seem too bad, but realistically, double that. You know, you got to add a ton of stuff to make a mill actually function. Tooling, coolant system, a stand, an enclosure, vices, clamps, measuring instruments. I mean, you can nickel and dime yourself into the poor house. So be realistic if you want to go this route, uh, you know, about what's going to be required. Now, of course, you can buy used big time industrial machines like I was mentioning before, Haas's and things like that, uh, used for, you know, 30 grand, 20 grand. But I mean, this is the kind of the question that I would have asked is, do I want to take a 20 year old machine with, you know, 10,000 hours on the uh, uh, on the spindle and uh, ancient software and uh, you know all that and and have to recondition it and stuff I, I don't have the knowledge for that uh, and probably not the budget either so that wasn't a good route for me so in terms of this specific machine a lot of folks would have financial resources to buy a machine like this without selling their firstborn speaking of which I'm taking bids on my son right now um, Nice kid, pretty good lefty pitcher, throws left, bats left, fastball low 80s. Full disclosure, uh, he's not that useful, you know, helping around the house. So, let me talk about this particular machine. So, Tormach makes three mills, and this is kind of the mama bear of the three, middle size. Now, this is really a very capable machine, despite the fact that it's much smaller and less powerful than, you know, those big industrial machines like Haas's. Uh, but it'll cut tool steel, you can run flood coolant, uh, you can add a full enclosure. I don't have the whole thing kind of set up at this point. Um, you can add a fourth axis if that floats your boat. Don't let some douchebag on a forum tell you that this is a toy. It's totally not. Um, does it have limitations? Absolutely. Uh, you know, a 30 horsepower, uh, five ton, you know, $100,000 vertical machining center is going to bring more speed durability, rigidity, versatility, all that stuff. But I could buy seven of these for the price of a bone stock Haas VM2. Seven. So I won't go too deep in my thought process, but basically I'm not interested in being a CNC hobbyist who spends all of his spare time screwing around with a machine because it's fun. I'm a knife maker. That's where my profession lies. That's where my paycheck comes from. So I needed something, you know, that's reasonably turnkey that wouldn't cost twice as much as my house that I could start making money with fairly quickly and that had a big enough table and motor to do what I needed. And that's totally been the case with this machine. The one thing I can't really tell you at this point is where it's going to be in terms of durability. So far, it's actually exceeded, you know, what I was expecting. So I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but, you know, here's the basic question. Is CNC for me? Um, you know, unless you're swimming in money, don't buy one of these uh, for knife making unless you already know exactly what it is that you want to do with it. You know, if you're just starting out in knife making, uh, your hard-earned cash is better spent on a really good belt grinder, a heat treating oven, anvil, forge, those kinds of things. Learn those basic skills and then come to something sort of more complicated uh, as your goals as a knife maker lead you to it. So how do I get started with CNC? Well, you know, I would recommend doing a bunch of research first. You know, hit the forums, the magazines, YouTube, all that sort of thing. John Saunders uh, NYC CNC channel 
absolutely excellent, great resource. Uh, John Grimsmo's got a great channel too. Uh, he's a knife maker. A um, couple other guys out there, just dig in, figure out what your budget is, and try and get a sense of whether your knife making goals really jibe with the cash that you'd be putting on the table to make something like this work for you. Uh, I'd also recommend picking up a copy of Autodesk Fusion 360, which is a CAD CAM uh, software package. If you have a small business, if you're a student, uh, you know, they got a, a bunch of different little plans that will allow you to get an introductory license to it for free. Um, and the advantage of doing that before you even have a machine is that you can spend time figuring out how those programs work seeing if you can wrap your mind around them, seeing if you think, oh yeah, this is going to be something that I'm going to be able to actually use, so that by the time you actually have a machine in hand, you're not just trying to figure out the really basic, basic things. You can actually go out and start saying, okay, I'm pretty close to making parts. See if it's something that you enjoy. See if it's the kind of thing that engages you. Some people, this is going to be too nerdy, too... Um, you know, too much like being a computer programmer. So if that's not you, you want to know that before you drop, you know, 10, 15, 20 grand on a machine like this. All right, that's about it for now. Um, check out my next video coming up in, I don't know, a week or two, uh, where I'm going to give an overview of this little system right here, what it does, kind of how it all hooks together. Um, and as I go forward, I'll uh, continue adding some videos uh, about, you know, kind of how the Tormach is working in the context of my own knife making uh, business and knife making journey maybe in the larger sense. All right, thanks guys and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.